Good morning, Facebook Live. My name is Curry Russell, and I am having way, way, way too much fun uh, getting started here with Curry and Coffee. Today is the beginning, and as you can already see, I'm making a few little mistakes as we, we get better and better at this. Um, this is my new favorite thing to do. We've been introducing the, the concept of network marketing for four years now. We've been helping people around the world become better marketers in, in multiple different aspects from lead generation to tools that we use to online stuff. But along the way, I realized that many of us face the same problems throughout in every different company. And so the other day, about a week ago, I was sitting there contemplating, how can I help many, many, many more people along the way? And I thought, what if everybody understood other people's journeys? You know, we always see people interviewing people at the top of their company. We always see people hearing it from people who've already made it. They've already, they've already reached the top ranks of their companies. They've already done the big things. But along the journey, we need to hear from everyone, from all aspects, not just the top earners, but what about understanding that we all come through the same fires, the same pains, the same processes, and that's what I want to help you with today. So I'm going to start this journey with my good friend, Bruce. I'm going to invite Bruce to come on in just a second. But Bruce is doing some incredible things over in his companies. He's our, he's part of a couple different companies but he's going to tell us a little bit about uh, creating a U economy today. And I'm going to bring Bruce in. And honestly, go ahead and share this. Invite your friends. Invite your team members so that other people get a chance to hear from people who are just regular people. Regular people going through this journey together. So I'm going to invite Bruce in right now. And I'm asking him to unmute himself from the green room. Bruce, are you with me? Yeah, hey, Curry, I'm right here. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you today? I'm going to make sure uh, it looks like you're frozen in my screen for some reason. I don't know why. We're going to see if I can get this to be unfrozen. All right, Bruce, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you fine, Curry. Awesome. You know what I'm going to do, Bruce? I, I don't, don't make this weird. I'm going to stop okay. my video on this side. So it's going to be like a radio interview. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. No problem. All right. I don't know if you're going to be frozen in the video or not. We're, I'm still playing. We're still adopting. Yesterday, this worked really well with Scott DeVore as we were testing this, this logic out. So, But I'm going to bring up um, uh, the, the process here. And my, my friend, I appreciate you for being one of the first people ever to be on my show, to be rocking and rolling with me. And I, I'd love to ask you, um, tell me a little bit about yourself, your background. Uh, yeah, hey, it's, it's great to be here, Curry. Thanks very much. I uh, actually, uh, you know, I went to college uh, to get into law enforcement, to be a police officer. That was a dream that I had. Um, you know, my father instilled in me along, you know, many years ago that if you have a passion about something and you enjoy doing something, then find a way to get paid for it. And uh, at the time, as a young kid growing up, um, I enjoyed riding motorcycles, and then all of a sudden I found out in police work you could actually get paid for riding a motorcycle, so <laughs> that was my dream. I wanted to get on a police department somewhere and ride a motorcycle and, and, uh, and do that, and that's what I did, um, and, I, and I did that for about 15 years, uh, and then, uh, but the, uh, the illusion of all that wore off, and, and uh, I knew that I was, I, I just had this feeling in my heart that I was destined for something different. So um, I wanted to find a better way to serve people. So I broke out into the private sector and and branched out into different things. Uh, you know, everything from you know loss prevention management to uh, surveillance equipment management. Um, and then I broke into the tour and transportation industry and started my own business down in Arizona for a while. Is that where you live at now, Bruce? No, actually, I, I moved back to California back in uh, 2011, but I was in Arizona for, for about seven years. Um, so, uh, still have a home down there that, that I uh, that I lease out. Uh, so the option is still there. I enjoy that area very much, but uh, right now, 
uh, California, Northern California. I'm up in the wine country area of, of uh, about 50 miles north of, northwest of Sa northeast of San Francisco. Awesome, awesome. Uh, yeah. You, you, some some of my favorite people in the world live over in San Francisco. Uh, Tina and okay. Kelly Malsom and. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I know. yeah. I, I've seen them. Yeah, absolutely. They're nice people. They are nice people. So, so tell me more about creating a you economy, Bruce. The the business that you got running right now, your the thing you're growing. What, tell me more about it. Well, uh, create a creating a you economy is actually a movement. It's 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 not a, a term that I phrased, or but it's a it's a movement that I've attached myself to because I realized that. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Curry, um, about five years ago, well, I want to say about maybe six years ago, I was not in a good place. Um, I had to sell my business down in Arizona. Um, I realized that instead of creating an opportunity for myself or something that I could really, uh, gravitate and grow, I really just created a job for myself. And that, that's really not what I wanted to do. Um, but anyway, I moved back to California to be close to my family and, I found myself at 50 years old, 58 years old, and kind of lost. I, I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, I, I, you know, I figured, well, maybe I better just go out and get a job. And so I found one night I found myself sitting on the edge of my bed, and I was just like, uh, I, I just, I said, there's got to be a better way. And uh, so I started reaching out to some people that I had followed years ago uh, that I really resonated with. And uh, I plugged into one of those individuals who happened to be the publisher of Success Magazine at the time, a guy by the name of Darren Hardy. Um, I, I started following him. Uh, I started, I subscribed to the magazine because uh, I knew there was some good content in there. And I started hearing this term about the U economy um, and about how people were uh, taking back control of their lives, taking back control of their schedule, even on a part-time basis. They were, you know, having side hustles going. So I started to plug into this a little bit, but what it did was it made me aware. I started to observe and being up here in California, um, I used to spend a lot of time in and around San Francisco and I'm watching people down in San Francisco, you know, down through the financial district. And I noticed one day I says, I see all these people walking up and down these sidewalks, uh, parking their cars, walking to work or walking to Starbucks. Nobody has a smile on their face. I mean, these are thousands of people. Nobody has a smile on their face. And it started to dawn on me that so many people are doing what they're doing because they're good at it, but they're not happy with it. And so as soon as I started seeing people talk about this U economy, uh, people like Mel Robbins and Tony Robbins and Darren Hardy and other people in Success Magazine, Paul Jane Pilzer, uh, I said, you know what? I, I got a, I, I, you know, I've got some talents. There's some things that I could do. Um, so I started to explore part time about how I could plug into this U economy. And the more I learned about it, the more I started talking about it. And I created a fan page on Facebook called Creating the U Economy. Uh, started, you know, promoting personal development material out there and just kind of experimenting with it while I was creating some side hustles for myself. Uh, but really, that's where it all got started, Curry. That's incredible. And so when I just finished one of Darren Hardy's books myself uh, the other day on the airplane. And I, I finished that book and I got so excited about it because I thought, these this is the path. You know, Darren's, Darren's done some amazing things in his life, even at an early age. But it was because of his upbringing. It was because people in his life were pushing him in a direction that many of us don't get, I mean, you know, yourself joining, joining law enforcement, myself going into public safety, software and military. And we we weren't pushed down the upper, you know, 70 percentile path, right? We were pushed into the normal, like av middle class path. And, exactly. And I love that. But when you first got into this, how, how skeptical were you? Well, I'll tell you, I, um, I actually got into it by kind of accident. Uh, uh, I'm going to say way back in 19, 1993, 1994, um, I had just gotten laid off from a, from a corporate America job. I worked for a major uh, nationwide corporate retailer. 
I never really had been laid off before. And I thought, oh, you know, hey, I'll go get another job. But, you know, back in that time, the, the jobs I was looking for were not real plentiful. And uh, I was getting a little desperate. Um, I just bought a new home uh, here in California. And my severance money was running out and I needed to do something. And then all of a sudden, somebody says, hey, you know, you should talk to this lady. She's got something that would gravitate that you'd probably gravitate to. And uh, so I talked to her and it happened to be this personal wireless alarm system okay and uh you know home alarms or personal alarms car alarms and i thought well hey, i got a law enforcement background i could do this and, and i talked to her and i signed up she was looking for people to expand her business and so i saw i had no idea what i was signing on to i just knew that i could probably go out and sell these things uh, and so i did i started selling them i started making some money and i said okay and then all of a sudden she gets a hold of me she goes you know you're pretty good at this. Have you have you thought about building a team? I said, what are you talking about? What, what do you mean building a team? So then all of a sudden she started to show me how I could find other people like myself to sell these and I could earn income from their efforts as well. I had no idea that I was getting into network marketing at that time, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed having my own schedule. I enjoyed the freedom I, and I enjoyed making money and I, and I enjoyed the product. It was, it was just consumer electronics. That's what it was. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, I, she invited me to go to the national convention down in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, and when I went to that thing, there's like 15,000 people packed into the, uh, at that time, it was the America West Arena, which is now uh, American Airlines Arena, uh, where the Phoenix Suns play basketball. And all of a sudden, all these lights started going on in my head because I saw these incredible, talented uh speakers on stage and they were speaking my language in relative to personal development and i thought wow this is and i started to gravitate more towards the personal development than i really did the business side of the consumer electronics um and that's where i met some incredible people uh that's where i met people like jeff olson and eric quarry um and uh, jay bennett and some other incredible leaders uh, that were speaking my language or personal development and, you know, grabbing a hold of, of something that you enjoy doing and, and making a run at it and what you could do uh, with a little bit of time and a little bit of effort and a lot of passion. That's it. This is, this is probably, I, I, this is the first interview. This is the first real interview in this series. Um, no, no offense to Scott DeVore, but he don't count. He don't count. That you are the first... <laughs> You're the first interview, and what I love about this already is you 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 already stated that events was the, the going to that first event was the first thing that solidified your position in this industry. Not it doesn't make a difference what company it was. It has everything to do with the fact that an event gave you the actual belief in the vision of what it was. Right? Does that is that exactly? Okay? And, exactly. And num number two, how much personal development is the key to success? We no no but nobody tells you when you join any company, any business, any side hustle that the key to success truly is in the personal development. But I've discovered and you've discovered and many others that Network marketing in general, direct sales and in, in, uh, direct sales, affiliate marketing, they're all a personal development program with a compensation plan. Exactly. That's, that's what it's all about. Exactly. And, and, and until people get that. So, so I didn't ask you that I didn't have this question, but I'm going to ask you anyway. What's the book that you're currently reading? Oh, the book I'm currently reading is um, actually I'm reading Beach Money by Jordan Adler. Good book. All right. Do you have Good the book. second one? Um, my jet. My second one is actually uh, right here. Um, I don't mean Vivid Vision. No, I mean the second <laughs> Beach Money book. Oh, I haven't. I haven't read the second Beach Money book yet. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to get that one. Yeah. Yeah, better than Beach Money. Better than Beach Money. Yeah, yeah. So and, so and here's what. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you go ahead. So here's what I found, too, is that here's what I like about Jordan's book. Um, it's, it's no doubt a personal development book, but um, there's, 
there's two books out there for people that are in this industry network marketing or who are exploring wanting to get into this industry there's two books out there in my personal opinion that are probably the bible surrounding uh what you need to do to be successful uh in this industry and that is eric worry's uh, go pro the seven steps to becoming a network marketing professional and the key phrase in there is professional okay um and then beach money because by jordan adler and the reason is is because these two guys um found a way to break down this industry into the very basic form you do these few things on an everyday basis a few hours each day and you'll be and you can be successful and you can create success and there's so much truth to that that it is the basic things so many people want to uh, recreate the wheel. They want to do, you know, try new things, think that they're, they're finding a cheat, right? They're trying to cheat the system. But if you get, go to the basics of what it is, sharing, mess, getting a hold of people, making phone calls, the personal development, those, if you follow the steps, anyone can become a professional in this field. Exactly. And there, and there's so many, there's so many leaders in network marketing companies that allow you to follow them where you can pick up on their language, their verbiage, what's working for them. And you can kind of, cause I follow different leaders in, in different companies. Um, and you can start, you can start to pick up their language. And here's what's cool about network marketing is that, um, you don't have to worry about you know creating your own words. You don't have to worry about creating your own scripts or, or, or what you're going to say. If you just follow the people that have had success, they'll tell you what to say. And I, and I thought for a second, I said, you mean to tell me that I can use their words to help create my own success? I don't ha I, I'm not by myself here. I can use their words. You know, when I first got started in this industry, Curry, it was back in 19, like I said, 1993, 1994. There was no internet. There was no social media. Uh, there, um, you know, I had a personal computer. There was no email, okay? We used to have to put, if I wanted to try and get people some information, I'd have to put these packets together with a great big, v I don't know if anybody remembers the big VHS video cassettes. You'd throw that cassette in this package. You put it in priority mail, and you'd mail it to them. And then you're counting down days, okay, they should have received it today, okay, so now I'm going to follow up with them today. I mean, that's what we did. We, we didn't have the ease of what we have now. And then we thought it was a big deal when companies produced these small uh, uh, audio cassettes that people could just put into their car. That was a big thing. So you'd order these audio cassettes. Now you could send out an audio cassette or just hand it to somebody. So, I mean, that was a, that was how I, that's how I resonated, but I remember following people like Jim Rohn, and, and I started crafting his words. I started using the words of top leaders. I'm thinking to myself, hey, this is pretty cool. You know, I can develop, I can, I can model their posture. I can model their words to create success for myself. It's an ongoing training ground where you're learning some, something new every day. And that's what just worked. It just lit a fire underneath, un, underneath me at that time. So let me, let me ask currently what's yeah. your what's your current biggest pain point in your business um biggest pain point um you know getting people to see okay mm -hmm. um you know really my biggest pain point is reaching other people's pain point look i know people are hurting out there i know people are not happy where they're at but they're locked into this paradigm. And normally, if I can get somebody's attention for 10 minutes, that's all I need is 10 minutes. All of a sudden, I can help turn off the gray in their area. And all of a sudden, the light starts to come on. And they say, hey, that sounds kind of interesting. Tell me a little bit more. And that's all you need to hear is somebody to tell you, can you tell me a little bit more? And that leads to the conversation. That leads to the next conversation. Uh, that leads to maybe inviting them onto a three-way call where all of a sudden they're talking to somebody that they never thought they'd be able to talk to before, okay? 
um, where you're where you're, you're starting to gain that third party credibility. There's what I love about this industry is that there's so many people, there's so many team members that are willing to help you. You know, in in in, in corporate America, it's a doggy dog world. I mean, you know, it's it's either you know if you're not the first to the dog bowl, you're going to start right. In, in network marketing, what's great is that you have this support structure where everybody can come together and everybody wants to learn together and everybody wants to help each other grow and prosper because, and it's a true level playing field. Um, you can, you can earn and work your way to the top um, at, with, with, with some basic skill sets. And as long as you're willing to plug into a success system and follow a system that was designed by people that know, knows that it works. So, so we only got a few more minutes left, Bruce, and I, I want to sure. always keep these short, but you're, you've, you've, yeah. you've provided so much value in this one interview. And I, I'd like to ask, uh, or I want to point out one thing that I love what you just said. You essentially just talked about planting seeds. It's not about beating them over the head yeah. with your product. It's about giving them the opportunity to let you know what their pain points are and then leading to the next thing and leading to the next step and leading to the next step and allowing that person to ask you for the information. And that's when you get really good at this business. And it takes time. It takes real time to develop into that level of marketer, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's just, you know, eventually the, the, the words and the phrases and, you know, it becomes ingrained in you. And then all of a sudden it's, it's just, it's just where, you know, the words become automatic. You know, you've heard it before, Curry, you know, if I could, would you, if I could show you a way, would you take a look? Okay. Um, you know, it, it's about 10 minutes. Yep. It's about 15 minutes. It's it's not it's nothing, you know, you 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 don't you're you're not here's the thing. You're not trying to sell anybody on anything. And that's the beauty of this industry. You're simply trying to show them that there is a better way. Hey, it may or may not be for them. That's and right. that's fine. But you know what, Curry? I meet people every day. And it hurts me if I don't at least try and share. Okay? Like I said, it may or may not be for them, but I want to. I want to at least move on throughout my day, knowing that I at least showed them the possibilities, and at least they have my information. Because there may be that day down the road that says, where all of a sudden it resonates with them, saying, "You know what? I hate what I'm doing. I I need to get a hold of that guy who told me that there's a better way, or that there's something. I'm going to reach out to that Bruce Corkill again, or I'm going to reach out to that Curry Russell again, because I want to have a further conversation. I think." And I need to explore this a little bit further. And I love that you said that because it's almost once you become aware, it's an obligation to share. You once you exactly. become aware, it's an obligation. You can't. It, it it's it's immoral. It's immoral not to try to help somebody. And that's horrible. That's horrible that that you have to come to that mental state that it. If you don't try to help somebody get out of the current situation they're in, you've just done them a disservice. You know what I'm, I know you know that's exactly where we get to. So I'm going to wrap this up, but I want to give I want one more question and then I'm going to give you 60 seconds to uh, talk about uh, the U economy one more time. But who is, okay. you know, in your perfect world, Bruce, if you, uh -huh. if you had a perfect image of the person that you're trying to bring into your business to work with to mentor who is what's that person perfect person look like uh the perfect person well it's a person who uh it's a person who's just set up with the status quo it's a person that is, that is sick and tired of of uh, traveling down the highway, walking into an off a beautiful outside office building only to be locked in a cubicle for the next eight hours, um, only to leave that office building, get back on the roadway, uh, travel an hour back home to work, only to do it over and over again for the next five days. And then, even when they're on vacation, 
even when they're on vacation, they feel that they're locked into that company. They're locked into checking their email. They're locked into checking their, their text messages. Uh, they're not really on vacation. They're not even away. They're just in a different location, but they're still have, they're, they still feel the need to be, to be present when they're on vacation. They, they feel that they have to be present and checking their emails. And I see it every day up here in the wine country. People are visiting these beautiful wineries. But what do I see? I see male and females outside of the tasting rooms, okay, or outside the wineries, and they got their phone stuck to their ear. And I hear them talking. They're on a conference call, or they're checking an email, or they're responding to a text. I'm saying, these people are on vacation. These people don't even know the pain that they're in. So that's my perfect avatar, the people who are experiencing pain, but they don't even know it, but I can help them recognize it. That's beautiful, man. That is that is truly that's powerful. So, so go ahead and in in give me your elevator pitch, and I'm gonna I'm gonna close this thing down in just a second. But give me your elevator pitch, Bruce. Uh, about you know just less than sixty seconds of of why somebody should be uh, taking a look at what you got, and they can go to your link in the description of this video. Uh, check you out. They can check out what you got to offer. But go ahead and and give me that uh, elevator pitch, Bruce. Sure. Um, look, uh, you know, I want to I want to say this, and that is, is that have you ever thought of exploring a better way than what you're doing right now? Have you ever thought about being able to take your skill set and your talent set and explore a way where you could make a income part time or as a side gig using your current skill set? I see I see in you probably more greatness in you than you see in yourself. And I want to know if you're willing to walk into some new standards and set some new standards for yourself, would you like to lock arms with me and explore a new way, a better way, and a way where you can create some more time for yourself, more time for your family, so that you can not only be present in your own life, but you can be present in their lives more than you are right now. What would that mean for you if you could have more time with your kids? What would it mean for you to be able to pick your kids up from school? What would it mean to you if you could arbitrarily add a second's notice on a Friday evening saying, hey kids, let's go to Disneyland? Or what would it mean to you on a Wednesday in the middle of the week, hey kids, hey mom, what do you say we pack up the car and go on a road trip? Um, I'm gonna unplug for a few days. Knowing, knowing that you're involved in an industry that can run on autopilot for you while you're out having fun and attack and reattaching and being with your family and being present as a father and a mother. What would that mean for you? If you're willing to take a look, I'd love to share some information with you. Are well, you ready? That is awesome, sir. That is outstanding. So, Bruce, I'm going to say thank you very, very much for being the first a uh, real interview for the uh, Curry and Coffee Morning Show, the Marketers Interview Series. I think you just set the set the bar pretty high on how uh, the, these interviews are going to go. You, the, the content you brought was outstanding. So thank you so much for being here. And I'm going to uh, say goodbye to you now and, sh and lock this thing out. And uh, I, like I said, Bruce, thank you so much for jumping in. Uh, being brave. I mean, nobody, I mean, you were just like, yeah, let's do this thing. Let's do this thing. So <laughs> thank you so much for your time, Bruce. Okay, Curry. Hey, thanks for, I'll see you soon, my friend. All right, man. See you soon. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, I'm going to wrap this thing up. As you can see, this is going to be powerful. When somebody like Bruce comes on board, tells us everything that you need to know, gives you the value this was not set up, by the way. Nothing about this was um, overly talked about. I sent him some questions 15 minutes prior to the interview. There was no, uh, th it was conversation. This is the most beautiful thing that we can create is helping other people become better. And Bruce just set the bar pretty high on the standard. You know, the right books, the right uh, going to events, personal development, understanding why he's doing this, and it's just powerful. So guys, thank you very, very much for being part of the very first Curry and Coffee Morning Show, the Marketers Interview Series. My name is Curry Russell, and I'm having a blast showing you guys that there is a better way. Thank you all very much. See you tomorrow.